For those of you who are still waiting for this train, please move along to platform 6 as it departs in 3 minutes. Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Um, last week's video, yes, we had quite a few topics in last week's video and a great response to all of the topics to be honest. Um, the first topic is the sound that comes from the steam locomotives. Um, I totally agree with everybody who said that the vinyl sounds a whole lot, lot better than what comes from the steam engines. However, diesels seem to be a lot better. Uh, I'm not sure why that is. So maybe technology will improve um, and we'll get a better sound from steam locomotives in the future, but uh, that's just uh, my opinion. And Next topic, the Royal Mail Train. Um, in last week's video, um, I was trying to um, work out what went with the Royal Mail carriages. And um, thanks to French team and Jason, um, I've come up with a compromise. Now, it can be expensive just buying coaches after coaches and if you get it wrong so this is my thinking I'm going to lose that full break I'm going to keep that um, composite break over there and I'm going to lose those two parcels I was going to lose them anyway but uh, yeah, I'm going to remove them but I will keep that full break and I've got some Royal Mail decals coming to put on the side of them because um, I've seen a full break on the Great Central Railway with the Royal Mail logos on the side in the BR Red so I've decided to keep that but um, French team's comment, I have a, another carriage on order, um, it's to go along with that one over there, so there will be a corridor which will go in there because once the staff finished obviously sorting the mail they would have to go somewhere um, to rest up, especially if they go in on the long journeys from King's Cross up to um, maybe up as far as Aberdeen or, or if you were going from um, Marleybone all the way up to Liverpool or somewhere like that or on to Glasgow once the staff are finished or taken a break they would need somewhere to go so that's what's going to happen there I have ordered another one of those and that should come shortly, so that will extend the rake to um, six carriages. So I've still got one more carriage to put in there. So hopefully by the end of the video we shall have what I would like to call a proper Royal Mail train. And then at some point I will make a parcels train, which is totally different yet again. So, yeah, so that's where we are. 
before we move on to the roof um, I'd just like to say on behalf of Mrs. T a big thank you to everybody who has wished her well in the last video and um, she, she is um, quite taken aback when I was explaining that uh, so many people are wishing you well and um, hopefully she may pop, pop in the video later on right so the roof I'm still modifying the trusses I have about another eight more of these to do and they're taking uh, a little bit longer than I thought but um, we're getting there then we shall start tying the trusses in I have now started to put the trusses in from this side now I've put uh, one in at the moment and it's just about on centre just slightly off but I can I can live with that but as you can see as they're going in the spaces are opening up as we follow the curve um, but the good thing is we have a little lip here I don't know if you can see that there where the tiles finish up against the original support so um, which is working in my favor because now I've got two fixed points I've got the 44 mil from here to the underside and I've also got this ledge which I can put the trusses up against so I've got two fixed points and hopefully that then brings all these nice and level and as you can see it's not too bad across the top um, where the uh, solder is going to go still a bit of flex in there but yeah I think that's, that's going to work out quite well but as you can see on that side the, the gap is opening up we've got a good 5-6mm gap in between the trusses there none of this is tacked yet because what I'll do is once all these are tacked on this side I can space them equally as we come round the corner so that's where we are at the moment so I'm keeping my 28mm centers and then just measuring 44mm up to the underside of this tie bar because that's critical because like, all the other tie bars will be measured off of this one so that's ready for a little bit of solder I think I mentioned before that there's over 5,000 joints and what I'll do is I'll just check and make sure that's level, it looks about level See, it's important to get both sides of that one. 30 mil centers, spot on. And here we now have the final truss. I've just tapped it in. And I'm just checking the distance of the last truss, and it's literally. millimeter out so that's not too bad obviously there's going to be a little bit of uh, tolerance as you go along but uh, to be a millimeter out that's uh, not bad at all so I've tacked it in so now the next thing to do is to start tacking all these ridges and spacing out the sides um, on this side so spacing out all the sides so let's have a, a little look at where we are now I have now removed most of the wooden 
divided as it were except for the center one and uh, I'll still be using this as a guide to make sure that these are upright when I come to do the top tacks so I shall continue with that and get back to you once all these um, stiffness or tie-ins are done and we shall see what it looks like then moving on we have done some tie-ins on this side of the roof and um, with this one is fully um, soldered to the trusses and this one here is just tacked in a few places and as you can see it's worked out quite well um, from this point here where the, we have joined it um, the centers here have worked out more or less the same 32 mil until we get about here when the bend starts to ease off then we come down to 30 mil and then 29 mil and then back to the 28 mil centers by the time we reach this joint here and uh, yeah and if you look along the roof you can see the curve taking shape and here is a better view um, of this far side as you can see the curve kind of blends in with the smaller canopy on the left just as that bends around so on the whole it's working out quite well there's still over 500 joints to solder up and then once I've got those soldered up I've got to turn it upside down and do the top ridge because the solder tends to want to run away from you um, with these joints here it tends to want to run away and melt into this um, triangular part of the truss here so that's where we are this week we've we've done a fair bit I think um, it is fiddly because each one of these as I mentioned earlier had to be measured from this tip to there and then we had to measure from there to there off this one so that the pattern stays the same all the way around and then there's still the tie-ins to do on this side but that will be in another video right it's time to look at the mail train show you what I've done there I have stopped the train so we can have a look at it and uh, where I've stopped it uh, I think um, John Cuda here would chew my ears off of this for um, blocking the station entrance but um, yeah I think uh, you'll have a word with me about this anyway this is what I've done I've added a uh, BR Mark 1 through corridor is here and another TPO and um, sort and van is turned up and that was the cheapest one so far I got, got that for 30 quid that one included postage which was a, a bargain so so with that in mind that has completed the rake of Royal Mail TPOs I think so I don't want to make this train too long the two parcels um, 
wagons that were there I have um, removed from the train and then we've got the full brake at the end um, some Royal Mail transfers have turned up so I'm going to add them to that Grizzly full brake because I have seen a photograph um, with Royal Mail transfers on that colour coach so there you go that's where we are with the Royal Mail train and um, I think I've got one more coach to add to that um, I think a seven coach train is, is more than enough for this size layout yeah, so there we are with that so now it's competition time see you in a bit right what you've all been waiting for it's competition time and I've had a brilliant response to the competition with 38 correct answers so you all know the stations let's go through them main station is New Hassel next stop down the line was Tang Dock the next stop down the line is North Shields see I remembered and right at the end of the line we had South Shields so well done to everybody who has got that right and that was 38 of you so with that in mind I shall hand you over to my hostess. Hello and good evening. I'd just like to say a big thank you to all the good people that wished me well after my operation. It is really, really appreciated. Thank you very much. Without further ado, I have 39, 38 names in this hat. I'm going to pull one out. And um, Who's going to be the lucky winner of the LMS parcel vans? So without further ado, let's open it up. And it is Phil Parrish. So there you have it folks. Phil Parrish is the lucky winner. So Phil, if you leave a comment below and somehow in this media world of ours I'll get in touch with you or you can go to my Facebook page and ping me a message and uh, we can sort out how to get these parcels fans to you. Um, Regarding next week's video, um, I might not have one because I'm going to the great electric train show. Yeah, I've got that right. So I might meet some of you guys there. So that'll be a good weekend. Really looking forward to that. So thanks again everybody for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. And bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.